You're listening to the Crucial Four podcast series, where your journey is our passion. Now introducing the Crucial Four founder and CEO, Charles Barber. Good day, everybody. This is Charles Barber with Crucial Four. And today we're going to be talking to Justin from Extreme Health Radio. And I'm super excited to talk to Justin. When I first got into health and wellness, he was like the pioneer in podcasting. Like he, he was, he's been there, you know, since the beginning. And here we are like almost a decade later since he started his podcast. Uh, and I'm interviewing him on our podcast. So it's a super awesome conversation we're going to have today. If you're into farming and self-development and nutrition, then you're going to want to stick around because it was a good one and strictly from the heart. And that's how we're going to be doing these things. No scripts here. So we want to thank you guys for listening and uh, enjoy the show. Gosh, I got into health in 03 and then I started the podcast in 2012. So that was 10 years ago. But it's it's amazing if you keep learning like what like how much fun it could be. I don't know if you if you get like this, but like if you hit a plateau with your knowledge, it just seems like it gets boring, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's so totally. Funny. Yeah. That's so funny that you bring this up because just yesterday I was talking with my farm worker about that because I. I I had gotten into electroculture and like pyramids and part of the farming side of thing and really got pushed more Mm -hmm. into agronomy and soul science and like Kerry Reams and all his work and Albrecht, but just recently Uh got back into the electroculture and found like all these layers that I had never heard about because 10, 12 years ago when I first got into it, this stuff wasn't around. Like a lot of Christophe's, his French guys, a lot of his uh, patents and stuff hadn't been translated to English yet. So now I'm like getting right. back into it and there's like all these YouTube channels now, and like people out that are talking about him. His patents have gotten translated over to English. And like, so yeah, like I'm getting back into all this new stuff and deeper dimensions of it, which is like, like you said, man, it's like, it's so fun. It's fun, and isn't it? Yeah, oh my gosh. Like, What's well, it's. it's- yeah, it's just awesome how many different layers there are because there's the whole like big C, little V going on right now, right? There's that whole layer. And then there's a layer of all this biodynamic gardening that you're talking about. And then there's, you know, just a general overall layers of how to help people in your own life with their health conditions. But this electroculture thing, I'm sort of new to this as well, uh, using the copper uh, wires in your garden and stuff like that. Have you tried that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we've been doing all types of stuff. I actually got to do a little like consult consulting with two of the guys, uh, Yannick and Andrea. Yannick is kind of okay. the predecessor right now in the industry. And he's just not getting <clears throat> his videos translated over to English. And i uh, been speaking with him and, you know, working with him a little bit on some stuff. But then um, Andrea is kind of like worked underneath him. And he's kind Mm -hmm. of um, been a little bit more communicative. He's got a little bit more practical applications for things. But, yeah, I've been working with them. And, you know, I've always known a little bit about copper in the garden, just mainly through copper pyramids, you know, like building copper pyramids. Uh They're facing the north, um, which has been great. But then using the Christophe antennas, the copper, which isn't necessarily um, copper from what I understand. The idea is to get zinc galvanized uh iron which i believe uh-huh. is steel zinc and iron those galvanized okay. iron i think that they're laced with all three of those metals but the idea from what i understand is getting those three metals to come together and that's when you can really start to tap into the telluric uh etherical and then magnetic energies that exist all around us and then obviously within the earth wow. and then what the sun's bringing in there's that- another too that they're studying that's talking about sun energy and, and some spiral stuff and i got anyways i got a kit coming <laughs> so anyways yeah I've been that's playing, awesome yeah i've been playing with it a lot i think that the thing you, though with the the wire the copper wire is if like so you you make it in, you're talking about like we have an antenna right where you put something up in the sky and then you run the copper yeah ground yeah so that right. that is uh 
Christoph's like kind of not his last invention, but his his invention that he put out before that. He had this little device that had like these like flanges or these copper wires up here, and then it has like a box that's got like a zinc plate, a copper plate, and a steel plate, and it's like a box wow. it's got flanges on the top. <laughs> And then it's got a piece of tubing that goes towards the south. It's just kind of like a probe. It's pointing to the south. Uh-huh. And um, and then there's like a copper ring with a magnet up at the top where the, the little fingers come down to. And I get the idea, though, is that if you attach that to a wooden pole, you then have to take a copper wire or a galvanized wire and connect it to it and then drive that into the ground because the pole, the wooden pole, wouldn't be conductive. But... If you ran a copper pole or just a steel pole and connected it to that, then you obviously wouldn't have to run the wire in the ground. And Right, right. That makes sense. And supposedly what that does is it the height of it determines the diameter of it. So however how high it is, that determines the, the <laughs> diameter that it covers in the field. Because from what I understand, it's basically like, so say this is the – I wish I could have a little drawing thing right now. It'd be real nice to do, but say this is the yeah, end. yeah, yeah, totally. The field around it is kind of like so the tin is this tall, and there's like a field around it that kind of like protects everything growing underneath it, um, from what I understand. And then to take it further, he was actually connecting this antenna in the ground to wires going uh, south to north. And then those wires would then amplify the effects because you could ideally run those wires for miles and they would still work, apparently. Like, wow. But they 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 all they only go within like I think three meters, which I, I believe is like six feet. Uh, I got, I don't, don't get me wrong on my conversions there, but it's a three meter <laughs> line. So it's like so so you have the, the antenna. It connects to a copper wire, right? or a, a, get a stainless steel wire in the ground. Right. So it only has like, I think three feet that, so you'd have to like do one, do a line over and do a line over, you know, you have to like run these lines in the ground and you do it under, they call the plow line. Cause back in the day they plowed, right? We don't plow anymore. Right? That makes so, sense. Yeah. But um, the idea was to do it below the plow line. So you wouldn't mess up your plow. So as long as it's, I think, you know, a couple of feet or a foot in the ground, you're good. But I've even, but when I talked to Yannick, he was like, dude, you can put this on top of the soil, uh, the, the lot, the wire. Wow. Like, it doesn't have to be in the ground. That's a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but he invented wow. something where he got rid of the antenna and he just puts magnets and dude, I've got one in the other room. I should show you, but cause I built it. I figured out he basically, he doesn't tell you how to build them, but it's, it's simple stuff. It's these ferrite magnets together from their, uh, okay. They're a ceramic donut, so they have a countersink on the south pole. And uh -huh. you can get the rain south mm -hmm. north pole, but you do the countersink on the south and flats on the north. You connect about seven of these together, and then I you dip them in beeswax. And what the beeswax okay. does is it does something to where it kind of mitigates the uh, magnetic field going on the outside of the magnets. It kind of dissipates it. And as I dipped them in this metal dish, Interesting. Like, it got less and less magnetized right it would and when i first dipped it in the magnets go poop right to the metal where the beeswax was melted in it but then you like dip, lift it up you know just like you would make a candle right with your wick you dip it down right dip it up dip it down and you get these layers of wax to build around it and now i've got this thick layer of wax i'll, I'll have to show you this it's for, i've got them all uh, <laughs> that's so rad man yeah and then that helps keep the magnetic field in the galvanized white the line and he just runs those on top of the ground, no antenna, and and wow. you can just carry those. And Christophe's latest inventions were done that way. He got rid of the antennas, and he just started burying wow. stuff in the ground. And, wow, and that's amazing. Going, yeah, and getting and they all say thirty percent yield, but these guys were getting three hundred percent. Like they just all say thirty percent because they don't want people to know that. Right. You know, if you say three hundred percent, you're like, ah, yeah, that's not true. You, you yeah, know, you yeah, it's... hear about it in the farming stuff. Oh, you do this biodynamic tea, you're gonna get uh, a, you know a thousand percent more increase in yield, and you go and you do it, and you're like, oh, yeah, right. not happening. <laughs> all that, yeah. like, you know. Right? <laughs>
playing with so many of those decks. But no, I could speak for probably hours on electroculture right now because I've just been so deep. I've been interviewing them. I got one of them coming on the podcast too. So. Wow. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's really cool. And so, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. And it's funny because when I first started learning about all this stuff, um, I, I really dove deep into this kind of stuff, like back in to like 2005 and six and stuff. And at that time we lived in an apartment and we didn't have really the space or, you know, to get a lot of land here in, Cal in Southern California is really hard to do, you know? And, um, and so I let that kind of idea of being perfect, um, prevent me from starting a garden at all, you know? And I think recently, um, we've been able to expand a little bit and we, now we have like 11 fruit trees and we have a bunch, a couple raised beds. We have like 10 chickens. And so we're expanding out a little bit. Um, so now I'm going to start doing this, but it's funny because I'll get messages on Instagram. If I post like a picture of me with a, with a regular shovel, people will be like, you should use copper in your soils and all this stuff, you know? And it's funny because like, I know that, but I, I've got twin boys, dude, they're four years old. I don't have time to run, you know, do this kind of like high level stuff. I just need to get started. And then once I get started, then I'll be able to optimize, you know what I mean? But I was paralyzed for a lot of years because I wanted to do it like a level 10 out the gate. And I just was like, it's too much. It's too overwhelming. You know, I think it's, it's okay to use conventional stuff just to get going. Um, especially if it's your like family farm kind of thing, you're doing it on a, ma on a mass scale a little bit more for your products, but just for people to get started, it can be so overwhelming to hear all this stuff. Um, and so for me, it was just like, you know, I'm just going to get started. I don't care. I'm just going to get yeah. started, put some trees in the ground yeah. you know, and get started, you know? Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> on that note, on the copper tools, you know, people might say that, but they don't have them at home. And because I've looked yeah. at it, and they come from overseas. They're extremely expensive to get. And you are can, they? Yeah, yeah. Like I had a, I got a spade once, and um, because because it was back when I first got started ten years ago. Like same like you, I was like, uh -huh. tools. Here we go. And it made sense. Yeah. But what you can do is you can get a, a piece of copper tubing, and you can actually drill a hole in it. You can take a piece of beech wood and, and copper beech wood is what they say to use, but you can use any dowel wood. It doesn't matter. You drill a hole in that, like put it on a bed, and then you connect that to your shovel on the metal part and the copper touching the metal on your rake, shovel, whatever that's iron will mitigate the effects of the iron. Oh, okay. Well, that makes total sense. You don't, yeah. you don't need, apparently, you don't need to go buy these copper tools necessarily. Not that they wouldn't be better. I'm sure if it was solid copper, it'd probably be way better on the soil. Yeah. But, but the other thing to think about too, is like back in the day, they did a lot of plowing, even when they were using copper tools. And there's actually a specific plow that was made out of copper that vortexed the soil instead of pulling it out. But, Interesting. But again, like, we don't really do that anymore, right? We're all no chill farmers, so we're like building. I know. <laughs> and like when yeah. you, my system was all built by hand, you know, like and, and totally. You know, but if I was to redo it again, which we are, we're gonna we're doing this, some bigger projects and we're looking at some stuff in Costa Rica. But it's if I start over, I would use that machinery, but I'd only use it once. And I yeah, would use yeah. It everything built and established, especially if I'm running electrocultural, like steel wires in the beds, you know, like, Oh, for sure. Yeah. You, you would have to. So with that being said, you know, it's like, we're all like anti plow, anti teal, anti whatever. Um, but when you're building a new site from scratch and you've got sod in your backyard, this is where I learned the hard way. I was still stubborn mm -hmm. and like, no telling, no, no, no. And then yeah. <laughs> I destroyed myself, like physically. Like it was so hard. I know. Clay, like it. Yeah, totally. It was a nightmare. And then I bought a BCS tractor, which is a walk behind tractor, and bought a plow just for the aisles. And I, mm -hmm. when I first got it, the guy came over and demoed it. And he's like, let me make you a new bed from this thing. I'm like, how do you make me a whole new bed out of this? And he showed me, and I was just like, he made a raised bed. Wow. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm like, oh my gosh, wow. like four or five grand in labor, like paying people to come help me. And this dude, <laughs> minutes, like made this. Yeah, bed. totally. 
so you see what I'm saying? There's like this, like, you know, you live and you learn and then you, you know, it's so, but anyways, for sure. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Well, I love how this just kind of just flowed the way I kind of intended it to, you know, I know Nicole had said, you know, let's talk about your story, which we can definitely, um, talk about. I'd like to learn more, but sure. The main thing, the main reason I want to have you on is just because like, dude, I've been listening to you for a long time. Like I said, like you've been doing this for 10, 10 years. And I just remember you being in the beginning. Um, and I just think it's <laughs> awesome what you're doing. Uh, want to oh, welcome, thanks, you, man. welcome you to the show. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, man, you definitely been at the forefront of everything. You, you're like, like you, Patrick Tamponi, there's a few of you that really just get it. You know what I mean? And you always have yeah, to- yeah good guys on good advice on the good um that, supplements the good equipment to get and uh you know and awesome. you've gotten banned so we know you're super legit <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> if you haven't got your yep. account auto banned or canceled then <laughs> uh, right i know it's like who are you <laughs> uh, yeah it's kind of like, yeah a source of yeah it's cool <laughs> Yeah, I just felt like for me, I was I was learning a lot. So um, a friend of mine. So I've always been into like fitness and stuff. You know, um, my mom was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma back in '95, and I remember at the time. At that time, I was what 21, um, and I remember exploring different paths of healing for her. Uh, she went down to Mexico with my dad to go look at different clinics and stuff like that. And I remember going to a, um, a holistic clinic down in Carlsbad. Um, and I think that was a macrobiotic uh, place, you know, and at that time it was all new to me. Like I, I had no idea what this stuff was, you know? Um, and so I didn't really have any control over what my mom did, but I think she eventually got scared into doing conventional treatment, you know, <clears throat> because like any oncologist, like they're, they're always going to just tell you, oh, that stuff doesn't work, you know? Like, yeah. so she ended up going to the city of hope. And um, in L.A. and she got chemotherapy, radiation, uh, like uh, bone marrow transplant. She got the whole nine yards um, to the extent where I think she had less than a 10 percent chance of survival. Oh, wow. And she was in like the room with the bubble, you know, for like three or four months. Like, you know, we were down in Orange County and she was up there for like four months and you couldn't touch her. It was it was a bizarre time. And I remember going there to donate platelets to her. Um, and then eventually she got out, right? So she came back home and that's when she lost all her hair. And she went from, at the time she was like 55 and she went from 55 to 85 and gosh, like six months, like it, it just was so barbaric. And I remember thinking like, this, this can't be like, I remember thinking, why are all these people getting cancer now? And then there, there has to be a better way. Like this can't be the only way to heal from cancer. This is something, something was just not right. You know, I was 21 years old. I, I didn't really know what I know now, obviously, but something wasn't right. And so I was really into fitness at the time, working out, getting strong, going to the gym, you know, but my diet was trash, you know? And so eventually we just kind of, she healed and our family went on our way. Uh, and then in 2001, I took a trip around the world. I went surfing, all the different destinations. I went by myself for a year. Nice. Uh, and that was just super transformative. Oh man, what a what a time that was! And then <laughs> I came back, and a friend gave me a book called "Fit for Life." Have you ever read that book? Yeah, I mean, I've heard <laughs> of it, I haven't read it, but it's a very well known uh, book. You know? Yeah, it's uh, the Harvey Diamond, and he was one of the only guys to come back from Vietnam with Agent Orange poisoning, um, who was, who's been able to last. I think he's still alive. And, you know, he talked a lot about enzymes, cleansing, all that kind of stuff. And then I was like, wait a second. Things started to click. Like, so you can prevent cancer, and this directly applied to my mom. You know, you can heal from cancer. Why don't doctors know this, right? And so I started thinking to myself, like, I need to tell people about this, right? Uh, and then right around 2000, I think that was 2002 or three. No, that was 02. And then that friend gave me that book. And then I heard David Wolf on Coast to Coast, uh, that <laughs> no, radio show back in the day with, with David Wolf. And that was, uh, um, he was supposed to have, it was, it wasn't George Nori. It was the other guy. What was his name before George? Uh, whatever his name was, Art Bell. 
Okay. And uh, he was supposed to have some other guest on that night. And then uh, David Wolf was on. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, this guy sounds like he's 15 years old. Uh, what the hell is he talking about? You know, like yeah. this guy doesn't know anything. I was so bummed that my original you know, guest wasn't going to be on that night. Uh, and so but I, li- I listened to him and he was so captivating and he was so just charged speech. up about what he was talking about. Yeah, exactly. yeah, super good. So that got me into joining his membership site, The Best Day Ever. Uh, and then I became a raw food vegan from 03 to 2010. Like, I think all of us kind of played around with that diet uh, for a while. Did you ever do that? <laughs> Telling my story. My mom had breast cancer, got me into health. I mean, I, was, I had actually found wow. David Wolf through Elements for Life, which was an MLM company. Because I, found I remember a, them, yeah. Yeah, I found a book um, that David wrote. And it showed the Curlian photography, a Curlian uh, image of cacao. And then the bulb went oh, on. Right. And I was like, wait a minute. This is living. We're living. I've been eating nothing but death. Right. And I was like, holy shit. So I got into all the superfoods and the herbs and then was super just annoying with my rep. Elements for Life went under. My rep was like, hey, they were getting everything from Ultimate, which then, you know, since then has gotten bought out by you know who. And, but anyways... I got connected with right. Robert Gazar and all those guys, and, and Wolf was kind of a part of that crowd. Yep. And there's a few guys that worked for Ultimate that really gave them the really good cacao and the really good stuff, and I kind of stayed partnered with them. But but yeah, dude, very similar story. Very similar. Wow. Raw vegan. Yeah, how did no, your mom – So is your mom doing better now, or how is she? So my mom's, I think, I think 20 or 17 years cancer-free. Since then, but wow. she had breast cancer, and uh, she, uh, my mom's super religious, hardcore, like uh-huh. Orthodox Christian, Christian, but <clears throat> my mom's still an old school hippie. So, like, when I got into like the superfoods and the herbs, like, she was down, and she is still my number one fan, you know what I mean? Like, really, day, like, she. If she doesn't have her smoothie, you know, with all her goodies in there, <laughs> she, um. You know, she went and did surgery, but she did do uh-huh. she did new radiation because everything she had, you know, applied a lot of the mushrooms, a lot of the herbs, a lot of the. She wasn't completely raw vegan by no means, but she was had some real powerful foods in there, herbs, superfoods, whatnot. And nice. She it stopped growing, so it stayed like wow. that. It, but it didn't it didn't shrink. After like four or five months, it just stopped. So. It stopped wow. growing. It didn't shrink. So she had the surgery. Um, and yeah, that's kind of, she's been cancer free since. Man, that's cool. Was it the, your mom's cancer diagnosis that originally got you started or were you already going before? I mean, that? like I said, I was already into like kind of, a, I saw the curling photography thing. Yeah. I was getting into like self development <laughs> too. So it was, it definitely wasn't before. You know, okay. she didn't get cancer, and then I got into it all. I was already kind of into it, but it was really close. Like, it was all real close. But what really uh, blew me away to, like, want to start a company with these foods and things like that was her story and seeing her body, like, do what it did. Even though, you know, she did surgery, it was still a powerful thing to be said. A, a huge testament to the power of nutrition wow. to first stopping yeah. cancer in its, in its tracks, you know, like, keeping it from growing. And, you know, and my- what's... I know my mom got breast oh. cancer. You know, there's psychological things that she's she's a warrior. You know, always warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna warrior yourself? It's interesting. It's it's interesting when you start connecting dots because you because a lot of people I don't think continue down the rabbit trails and you see how uh, different sort of sectors of life and society are connected to each other or at least operate in the same way. Uh, because when you start realizing for me, when I was like, you know, I tried to tell doctors this when I'd go into appointments with my mom, you know, I tell doctors and they would just write me off like I don't know anything. And I just it was really interesting because I was like, here I was learning that you could prevent and and overcome cancer naturally. Telling a doctor who wants to heal people. Right. Uh, and they just won't even listen to you. And so then I started thinking, like, how and why is this like, why is this happening? How come? 
And then you start going down the rabbit trails of every aspect of life. And you're thinking to my, yourself, like, is everything sort of the same way where it's industry um, dominated, where it's all about the dollar and it's tightly controlled, but it doesn't look like it is on the outside. So it looks like these doctors really want to heal people. Um, and then, man, that just gets you going down every rabbit trail known to man. You know, <laughs> yeah, you get you know lizard people, yeah. everything else. <laughs> and you get angry again, and you're sad again. It's like yeah. nuts, you know. Totally. You know, I, yeah. I guess no, it's, it's we are we do have the internet now. We do have each other now. We're all connected, and I mean, if you think about where we are now versus where we were, you know, when we were all going raw vegan, you know, it's almost like we are at the beginning of all of this right mm -hmm. and it definitely evolved in a very short period of time you know like we're all eating meat again <laughs> but we're mm -hmm. getting right life sources and but i would also go to to say and to as a testament to the raw vegan diet is it cleaned us out cleaned all that bullshit totally. out didn't it <laughs> yeah it all totally out. and then we rebuilt yeah. our bodies with with good animal nutrition plants still always in the mix always and always will be mm -hmm. Like, you mm -hmm. know, and then you've seen the carnivore diet kind of swing up. This is the new thing now. It's like, dude, mm -hmm. I just laugh at all these diets, just like Wolf would say, call them, you know, these diets. Yep. Right? Even though he was on the most extreme one out of them all. Um, but at yeah. the end, end of the day, <laughs> um, I love that word because it, it created this psychological box in your mind, you know, and it really limited mm -hmm. your, per, your ability to have an open perception about certain situations and things and you know it really kind of created an elitist mentality i feel like being in these kind of raw vegan diet kind of like oh if you didn't eat meat or whatever but to my point right it was a good thing to do might have done it a little too long <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> But, yeah, I had after after that for seven years, I had I think I went to the, the biological dentist uh, in Texas, my guy, Dr. Nunley, uh, Stuart Nunley. And uh, <laughs> I think I had like seven or eight cavities. Yeah. You know, I had two root root, two root canals, uh, seven or eight cavities. I mean, my my mouth was a mess after that diet. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was crazy. Didn't help the oral <laughs> game for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I just think it's really important. Uh, powerful though i think one of the biggest things <clears throat> i learned early on too with this big c little v thing going on the last couple of years is i remember sharing at the very beginning i i don't know why maybe i've i've been involved in natural health for too long i just knew from the beginning of this something wasn't right and i didn't i didn't buy into it from day one i knew in my gut that there was something radically wrong with this and i remember sharing <clears throat> some anti excuse me but excuse me, I got a little hiccup. Um, some anti, I want to say the word V word, anti V word, uh, you know, things you can do, you know, like ozone and stuff like that. <clears throat> and I shared it on my Facebook with all my normie Facebook friends um, and saying, hey, guys, you don't have to fear this thing at all. You don't have to worry because I remember sharing like um, ultraviolet blood irradiation kills all of these things and you don't, it stops the replication. It stops them from entering into cells, all that stuff. And I just got nothing. I got no response, yeah. like nothing. And I realized that people don't want to hear things that either make them responsible or force them to take more responsibility for their health. They Sovereign. don't want to. Sovereign. What's that? Sovereign. I know. They right. don't want that. It's weird. Like you don't want it. I don't know why they wouldn't. But to me, it's like the ultimate insurance policy to know that there's a guy in your area that can do a 30 minute U, um, you know, UBI treatment, ultraviolet blood irradiation or um, 30 minute ozone session or uh, scorpic acid session uh, and wipe these things out. But no response. And so I realized people don't want to hear what you have to say. The only people are the you know, people that you ask you and they seek you out right. and then I'll spend as much time with those people as necessary, but I'm never going to, you know, I'm done sort of sharing stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> you know, cause well, people don't want it, you know? Well, and I think there's, <clears throat> I think there's different types of people that exist in society. I think there's people that are seekers that are allergic to the bullshit from day one. 
maybe they come here with a one destiny in their numerology. They, they come here to, you know, they've kind of reincarnated, if you believe in all that, or they've come back to do something. And whether they remember it or not, they sense the BS. And then there's the, mm -hmm. what's the term? Is it Miles Harkey, hierarchy of needs? Like when, oh, yeah. When most people's basic needs are met, which most people fall into this category, they're completely fine being the worker bee. Right. right? They're completely fine integrating into society, but they are really prone to listen to that collective voice, that collective cultural voice of what's being said. And the problem mm -hmm. is that that voice is being misrepresented through media, through TV, through all right. the bullshit. And these people inside are generally good people. We are one living as many. We're all connected to the one source. So I think inside they have this like genuine love for humanity and whether they hate their job or have bad relationships, you know, and this these things just twist perceptions and ideals and and create idea, create kind of uh, messed up energy, effed off energy, if you call it, if you will, whatever. Yeah. Um, but they aren't the ones to want to dig deeper and to be a detective. You know, they, they just want society to like tell them kind of what to do. They want to conform and the leaders are the leaders for a reason, you know, and they're the ones that are kind of dictating like what things, you know, we should do and shouldn't do. Like in a perfect world, people like, you know, like you and I that are into this stuff, we would be on these boards with all these other people that we obviously all enjoy that are in our health field. And we would all be talking together about how can we make, fix this problem, fix that problem. That's not how it is, right? That, that's not the world we live in. We, we all, right. you know, we see kind of what's going on and you know, how deep down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Uh, do we want to talk about blood sucking reptilians and all this? Or do we want to talk, mm -hmm. you know, what do we really yeah. want to go into here? But I right. think that, Genuinely, though, in society, you have groups of people and that that are just we're just all we're, some of us are a little different in, in how the information is received, you know, because um, like you said, you know, I, I, I mean, to add to what you said, yes, I totally get it to the point to where you're like, should I even share this anymore and just wait to the one right, that right come to me. Um, uh -huh. And um I think that we have to consistently still be that voice, which you obviously have still done. Um, and, and we just have to know that we're speaking our truth. And it's kind of like that thing, like what other people think doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't, right. it doesn't really matter that these people aren't listening or whatever. Maybe that, that's just our perception, right? Maybe that's just our that maybe that's the Facebook algorithm perception, <laughs> right? Like maybe they yeah. You know what I mean? But, but granted, I know what you mean. You actually interact with people, and they're very like, like my sister, like this. Yeah. Like, if she hears this, oh well. But like my the whole side of my family, like even my, my mom was like very anti. I'm like calling my mom like every month, you know, like hey mom, just making sure everything's on track, you know, you guys. Everything's good. You're not, you haven't got wow. me yet, right? You haven't got me yet, right? Because I know my sister. I know my stepsister. I know how they are. Wow. And I know they're in her flipping ear and, you know, trying to get the, oh, you know. <clears throat> but they also, like, that during the pandemic, that Christmas, no one showed up except me and my family. And I'm like, you guys are going to wow, like, yeah. show up. Like, my grandma's right here. My mom's right there. My dad's stepdad's right there. My family's there. And we're Zoom doing a Zoom meeting while they're all in their oh places, gosh. and I'm and I was such an oh. ass about it, bro. Like, I, you know how you can change the background <laughs> Zoom? I was like taking yeah, all yeah, the yeah. again and stuff, and like flashing it in the back of my screen. <laughs> <laughs> about that. That's so rad. But yeah, you know, it's yeah. like, it's a trip, bro. It's a trip. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I feel like the number one thing that is at stake is our consciousness is our awareness and it's a war on our awareness and our consciousness. And that's really what they're after at, at the end of it all. And we just have to make sure that we're crossing T's and dotting I's, you know what I'm saying? And like being true stewards and yeah. being a sovereign, isn't gimme, gimme, gimme life's easy. New age bullshit. Giving sovereign is taking responsibility. It's standing up. It's, it's taking your five gallon jugs, 
to get filled up with water like we did back in the day. Now we filter it all. But you know what I mean? It was that commitment to like make sure we got some of these basic things we all took for granted at the highest <laughs> quality that now was kind of a pain in the ass to do. You know, that, that's yeah. the, what it takes to be truly sovereign. You know, is is it takes hard work. It takes calluses. You got to get calluses, bro. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, totally. You know, and you know what, too, like, <laughs> as far as uh, like taking sovereignty, I know for me, what's helped a lot is like the idea of just of taking responsibility for things that are not your responsibility and saying sorry and coming to uh, any situation in life with a remedy. Um, and so that is like people that are sovereign uh, are people that come with a remedy and people that um, take responsibility. So like, even if it's like, say, say, uh, I don't know, say, say you and your wife are working in the garden and you she, she forgets to do something right that you want her to do, but you assume she will do it, but she doesn't do it. And then as a result of that, you lose some crops or some things, you know, some rodents eat it in the middle of the night and it all dies. You know, you could easily get mad at your wife or your friend or whoever you're working with. Like, why didn't you do that? You know, <laughs> and that person would say, well, you didn't tell me. Right. And so really. It's their responsibility. They should have known, right? But when you're sovereign, you take responsibility. You say, you know what? That's my. That's on me. Right. You know, I should have told you, even though you should have done it and you should have known. That's everything is on me. And you start apologizing and saying, you know what? That was my fault. You know, a true sovereign is someone who takes responsibility and takes onus and says, you know what? That was my fault. How can I come and bring a remedy? Okay, well, how can I fix this situation? That's what a sovereign person does. And someone who's not sovereign is just someone who sits around in the background, complains about how things are, can't figure things out, you know, and just coming to every situation with a solution and taking responsibility for it. Say, you know what? That's on me. You know what? Uh, you know, something that's not even under your control at all like some weather condition or whatever the case may be, just practicing by taking ownership of it and saying, you know what, that's my fault. I will fix it. Like that's where it starts in my opinion, you know? Because yeah. blame solves nothing. Right? Right. And you know that from having your business, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could blame a million people for a million things every day and it doesn't solve anything, <laughs> you know? They could, they could leave tomorrow and go get another job. I'm like, what job am I going to go get? Like, I don't have another. No one's gonna yeah. Go. It's like, I have zero work experience. I've just been running. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. In the workforce. I love it. But yeah, yeah. The, uh, the empathy game, which you really hinted on in there as well, is part of that being sovereign, you know, mm -hmm. true kingship. You know, what does it truly mean? And uh, mm -hmm. it's like Christ consciousness almost, right? It's like this right. level of awareness that you have yeah. for yourself, but for others. Um, and I think that when you do that, for situations in life that you're not in control over, but you take responsibility for it. You start doing that on bigger things and then you'll start doing that on littler things, smaller things. Yeah. And then it starts bleeding into like ultimate, you have the responsibility for, you know, your health, the, your outcomes, the expression of your health and vitality right now. All of that is a manifestation or a representation of the thoughts you think, the environment you live in, uh, your habits, your daily choices, you know, all of that stuff comes into the level of health that we're all experiencing now. And when you start taking control over the little things in life, you can start taking control over those things in life too. Like for a long time, I've always been an advocate of just like, like as an example of mitigating wireless technology in your house, you know, and um, you know, there, there are certain instances like we have a smart meter on our house. And so I know all the things of how to mitigate that, but you know what? I, I need to start actually doing it. Right. So then we called up, I spent like two hours on the phone to try to get that analog meter back on there and downgrade it from a smart meter to analog. And then I put a cover over it, you know, and then I, I researched and I found the the black, the, the Y shield 54 paint, put that on the wall and put some other tin foil. And I've got like three other things I'm putting on top of there along with a scalar energy device. But you know what? Like, this is how we take responsibility. It's easy for me to say, ah, oh, no big deal. You know, I can't feel this, the, you know, I'm yeah. not EMF sensitive. I can't feel it, but right. dude, this stuff affects us and it's up to us to control our environment. You know, Absolutely. it's up to us. We are more electrical than we are chemical, right? And mm -hmm. so, yeah, 
you know, talking about electro culture in the garden and then talking about electro culture around us, think about like if these plants were surrounded around all this shit that we're surrounded around, you know, it's just, it's, it's insanity really. Yeah. It's crazy. It makes sense. When you look at the stats and you see how many people are depressed, you see how many people are, you know, divorced, you know, it makes sense when, whenever you start to take those things into factor, um, because man, we, it's like they do just enough to push us to the edge to where we almost we complain, <laughs> we complain amongst our friends and ourselves, but we don't quite go as far as we should. Right. And it's like, how, right. how much of this shit are you willing to take before you decide, you know, to turn, turn the page, you know, to, to stand up, you know, and to drop the mic and to actually physically do something about it. Uh, right. And right. then, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you say, stacking it, stacking it up, the paint, the, the road. I've been making these um, Lakowski coils and putting oh, those wow. on our meters too. Just to, It's just another one of those things, you know, carry, uh, William Reich and Tesla and Lakowski, that's mm -hmm. kind of like the same technology, you know, getting back into that stuff has been, been exciting. But, yeah, it's, it, it's it's cool because it it really teaches you that there's more to our overall health than you know what we're being told you know the food pyramid and all that garbage that comes from the government or getting a sharp thing you know put in your arm it's so much more than that you know and i think that um when you start going down these rabbit trails and you start learning about everything it's almost like a a blessing and a curse in a sense because you know when you know the types of things that you we know and you go down rabbit trails and Life can be extremely depressing if you really wanted to and completely, totally disempowering as well when you understand what their overall goal is and, you know, what the plans are, you know, and when you understand that, you think to yourself, oh, my goodness. But ultimately, what it comes down to for me is being the fullest expression of who I'm supposed to be. And, you know, some people have higher tolerances for tyranny. Some people have lower tolerances. But the point is to figure out what our tolerance is and not go beyond that. So for you, it might be level two. For me, it might be a level five. But it doesn't really matter what the level is. Just for you, don't get to three. For me, don't get to six. And wherever my line in the sand is, I need to start making changes so that I can help other people do the same thing. Because if I'm not doing that, you know, what are we doing here? Like, what what, what is the point of all this? So for me, like health, I, I'm not really that interested in health, you know? I'm interested in what health allows me to do. And that allows me to live the kind of life that I want to live. It allows me to play with my kids. It allows me to live a long time so I can be there for them. It allows me to uh, start businesses or help people in some way, make change in the world. I mean, for me to be obsessed about health to me is a little bit overboard. I just like what health brings me and I want that. And so I do all the things that I can every day to, to be able to manifest that, you know? Um, but so I don't know, <laughs> that's just my take, you know? No, it's spot on. You know, we have to, uh, yeah, we got to take responsibility and, uh, it's our choice. And what's crazy is like you say, when you start making those small choices, you're, you, ch it changes, you know, we, we hear about, you know, oh, we can, go down this path of the string theory and how everything can change. We can manifest this new life. The thing though that people have to understand is that doesn't happen overnight. It starts with those small changes that you talked about earlier. And as you create those small changes, small things start happening. But when you mm -hmm. start to compound those things over time, that's when you really can look forward or back, you know, when you're in the future that when you're in the future that you, weren't in and you look back, you're like, holy crap. Yeah. That was a massive shift. Like uh -huh. if I were to go back 10 years, if you were to go back 10 years, hell, let's go back. Oh, years. let's go crazy, back. Crazy. Right. 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 It's like, <laughs> who was that person? How, look at how that person thought. Look at how that person lived. Look at how that no. the types of relationships that person was in, the types of people <clears throat> that person hung out with, the types of music that person uh, listened to. And I look at myself. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, that's not who I was. Like, I, I talk to people sometimes that I haven't seen since high school. And they're looking at me and I'm looking at them like, you haven't changed a bit. And they're looking at me like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, what? I know, right? It's a trip. Like, you don't even wreck. You don't look the same. You don't talk the same. You don't act the same. 
And you know, what's funny is that when you meet someone from your past in high school and they think all of those things about you, you're only giving them like if you look at it like a pie, like you're giving them a little slice of the pie that's really safe for them. And you give that to them and they still think all that. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. hilarious. Imagine if you dumped everything, you know, onto them, they think you're a nut job, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then, and yeah, so it's 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 a progression and you know i feel like time is the ultimate healer in, in a sense um but but yeah yeah so that's cool man so about yeah so you got into this you gotta go back to your story i guess you got into health because of your mom pretty much right i mean that's kind of like what really led you to search and discover where you are today and yeah so my mom's story was kind of, um, you know, that was in 95. And then a friend of mine gave me a book. Um, it wasn't really a friend, but it was just a guy that lived down by the beach where I used to go surfing. And he he would really talk to me about ancient civilizations and ancient cultures and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, show me all of his research. And that was like 98. And so my mind was just kind of opening up to different, you know, aspects of just reality itself. And so that was around 98. And then um, I knew the whole time I was working out you know, strong fit in the gym. Uh, I knew my diet was trash and I knew there's a dietary component to my mom's cancer, but I didn't put it all together in my head. Uh, then I took my trip and then I, my friend gave me that book fit for life. And then when I read that, just the world opened up to me. Um, and so that's when I started going down the rabbit trail from, you know, for seven years as a raw vegan going down that whole thing, um, and just learning and soaking up as much as I can. And, and like you said, it's, um, it's a total transformation. Like, I think really what this health game for me is, and probably for you too, it's just an avenue into personal growth. Really, that's what it really it all comes down to for me. Because some people get into personal growth because, you know, they were raised poor, you know, they want to make more money and they realize like, what does it take to earn more money, to serve more people, to create a business of value and to help people? What does it take to do that? And then you start getting into personal growth and personal development and I got into Jim Rohn. He was one of my, you know, biggest mentors and, you know, I went through uh, Jim. Jim Rohn was just amazing to me. Uh, my uh, jujitsu coach gave me his information. And and so then you realize, like, really, it's personal growth. And the dietary component is a part of that because it's a daily decision that we make, what kind of food to eat, what kind of thoughts to think and going in the direction. And like you said, it's like waves crashing against a cliff. It's a little bit changes every day. And then like you go back 10 years, 15 years, man, we're not even the same people. And I think that that's a, because we're constantly stretching and learning and growing. And I think that's really what ultimately it's all about. You know, it's not about the food. It's not about nutrition and minerals and, you know, light and, you know, all the stuff that we, it's fun to learn about, but it's really more about how this changes you as a person, you know, at least that's for me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, some of the things work better than others. And, and, you know, we definitely yeah. keep some <laughs> around and others we don't. And then some recircle back and come back full circle. You know, I remember, um, yeah, like a few months ago, I was, I guess so caught up in the latest, newest thing or I'm trying to do this, but I didn't really that actually the way it was in the beginning. It was like, what's the newest herb, the newest thing. And then I got to a point to where I was kind of like, I just want to like, let these herbs that I all know about work. You know what I mean? Versus like trying to add right. one in and then see where that's at and start playing kind of like more with just other things in life, you know, um, mm -hmm. like I said, raising children, I have two children as well, you know, and you get busy and you get in relationships, yeah. you get married. And so you, you kind of lose that time, right. To be able to just like dive in on the next latest, greatest thing. Um, I know just the other day, I was kind of like <laughs> looking around the herb cabinet and, um, <clears throat> just noticing like, some things that my daughter was going through, like stuffy nose, stuff like that. And I found this bottle of propolis that I had made from bees that we have here on the farm. But I grabbed the propolis, I didn't nice. it, putting it in 190 proof grape spirits, but didn't really have it done anything. I haven't been taking it, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, oh, it's propolis. I know propolis. Wow, yeah. Yeah, you might know propolis, but do you take propolis, dude? And it's just like, well, I take all this other stuff. Right, you know, right. You kind of get loaded with all these things and all these new things and all this stuff. And then starting to go back to like the foundation of like just solid stuff that we we don't really take that we probably should take, especially if it's in our cabinet. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so yeah, no, it's, and it was so powerful because now like I'm on this propolis kick, right? And like 
the family mm-hmm. has just been on this super immune thing. I feel like I feel like everyone's just so healthy, which is bringing this one thing back to the table because obviously we're still doing some of the new things we've learned, like, you know, methylene blue and, you know, I would say in the last two or three years, you know, that's kind of a newer one, right. That's popped around and still kind of incorporating right. new ones, but also going back, you know, to kind of that foundation of, of knowledge and information. Um, yeah. Yeah. Keep- I think too, that it's, it's really like important to be in, in charge or I, I guess what's a better word, uh, just in touch with your gut because you're, you're probably the same way, you know, people will write you and they'll say like, oh, what do I do for this? Or what do I, or so-and-so says this, but since this other guy says this, what do you think, you know? And I, I feel like for me, being in touch with your gut and what you really think is one of the most important things because there's all kinds of people, as you know, in this health world, you know, vegan, vegetarian, keto, carnivore, raw food, all this stuff, right? And then and then there's the different protocols to try and there's all these people debating and fighting over what's what's good and what's not. And I think ultimately there's a sense that our subconscious mind is innately and intuitively attracted to the thing that's going to heal us, whether we know it or not. So like right now I'm, I'm really into like ozone and getting back into my light therapy devices and stuff, you know? And I think that like for you with propolis, it's one of those things where if you're in touch with your gut, maybe you have some, I don't know, some, you know, some minor health challenge that your body's going through right now, but we don't even know that these things are going on behind the scenes. Right. And they're just kind of happening in the background. And maybe like your attraction to propolis or my attraction to, you know, um, you know, methylene blue right now is going to be what what heals me. And the only way to get in tune with that is to say, you know, what I really for some reason, I really want to take propolis right now. For some reason, I'm really into like learning about methylene blue and taking it and trying it. And maybe that's like that bond with our intuition is really what it's all about. Instead of listening to outside voices and say, what am I really into right now? Because what I'm really into is what's going to heal me. But unless we, if we keep listening to outside voices, we're always going to be fighting and not knowing and looking to outside voices for help. But it's going within and saying, you know what, for some reason right now, I'm really into magnesium. I don't know why, but maybe, so maybe that's healing me on a deep, on a deep level. Um, And that's what I really need to connect with is that intuition and that healing and shut out the voices outside, you know? Yeah, there's so much to be said about that, you know, especially with the age of Aquarian, that's the age of information. There's all this, and the, the Aquarian is the I know, right? They know, they know. And it's like needing to know, needing to know. I need to know, question, question, question. Too much in the mind's eye. Mm-hmm. I think the Lord's prayer is the most powerful prayer for the times right now to have discernment, but to add yeah. more so to even what you said, our intuition, where is it at? Are, how are you using it? Right. Like, cultivating it how are you nourishing it you have to get out in nature you have to get grounded you have to touch mama earth you have to get down in there you have to start meditating you have to start having a long time you have to start getting away from all the bs and all, all of that stuff so that you can tap into that that stillness within you so you can learn to, to listen to that voice the vo- that's a silent voice right. right the song of silence right learning to to mm-hmm. hear that Right, people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Song right. Song? How do you hear that? Like, it, it's, it's, it's a knowing. It's a download. It's a, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, we call it intuition, but there's really that's a terrible word for it, to be honest. Like, I feel like words almost can't describe it. Maybe through the English language <laughs> that you can't. Maybe there's another language that can right. like that. But yeah, we have to. I feel like cultivating that ability to using our intuition is is so important right now it's so important that Dude, that's the most important thing isn't it i feel like it is because it, it's totally yeah ozone's good uh blue, blue good uh propolis is good vitamin c is good but at the end of the day you know like we can't do it all at once you know what i mean you can't do it all you know like which one do you mm-hmm. get you get this one or that one you know and so yeah we have to go deeper within and we have to pray i feel like and a lot of times for me like I'll ask, like, show me, you know, like, show me the signs or help me, especially in the beginning, especially when I got into, like, uh, the I Am Discourse stuff, and it was really big upon, like, just staying connected yeah. to the source and God and, and, and having a dialogue going on pretty much 24-7 that allows you to be mm-hmm. able to have that 
connected this to, to source. And it's for me, it's like when I really was pretty strict on that and did that, like almost like like people, someone would do a fast or a cleanse. I would do a spiritual kind of check-in fast cleanse, whatever you want to call it. Where I was very like tricked, was very like on top of it, you know what I mean? And going within my mind and, and really connecting to that. And, and oh my gosh, man, the bliss and the joy that I would find in doing that was amazing during it. But afterwards, holy moly, like I don't even do that stuff hardly anymore at all. Like I, I rarely, <laughs> right? I did because it like permanently changed me. Like it changed my thought patterns. It changed how I looked at my <clears throat> life. It changed like a lot of things about you know I would do as a male wow. that I stopped doing. You know, I'll leave it at that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, like, around, like, getting away from all of that garbage. You know, and and that not even being around like in my field anymore. You know, and so right. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I think cultivating a, our our senses our spiritual senses is, is so much so important too it's like we are more spiritual than we are physical beings we're spiritual beings living in the physical world and to add to what you said you know everything we see around us is the aftermath of all of that right it's it's what's happened after mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's the past and the future manifest right it's it's a trip right because we only have the now moment but we have to understand right that to add to what you said it so you eloquently said, said it so well it's small things which are simple things you know we have to make our lives and think about sick yeah and think about how like this would you know you and i were just kind of talking about the you know you know trusting your intuition in terms of like what like nutrients and supplements to take but if people were to do the same thing um just normies out there you know, think about the impact this would have on people getting the sharp thing put into their arm, right? right? Because everyone would have to know that, like, if they really went down into their intuition, there's something not right about this whole thing, right? But, you know, we don't, we constantly seek outside help and we constantly seek for authority figures to tell us what to do because it's easier, you know, to live life that way for most people. They don't want to take responsibility. And, you know, when I was on my trip, when I was, you know, traveling the world, I was reading that book, um, Atlas Shrugged. Uh, and the main character in that is a guy by the name of John Galt. And he had a sort of a love relationship with um, a lady by the name of Dagny Taggart, I think it was. But that book was really eye-opening for me in terms of like having someone who was really rooted into who they are and their mission and what their goals were. And nothing was going to stand in this guy's way. Like he was going to do what he was going to do. And there wasn't going to be anything that was going to get in his way. And whatever obstacle was put in front of him, um, he overcame it. And it's a really great love story. It's just an awesome book. And I, I kind of want to reread it, um, you know, going into these times right now, because it's the total opposite of that politically. But, you know, having a mission and knowing who you are and knowing where you're going and knowing where you are and um, really tuning into that, I think, is the most important thing. Because when you know who you are and where you're going and you know what your mission is, most people don't know any of those things about themselves. But when you're in touch with that, then nothing can shake you. You know, the same is with that book, Atlas Shrugged is that nothing can shake you. Nothing can take you off your path because you know who you are, you know where you're going, you know what your mission is. And some days you may not get everything done that you want or whatever the case may be, but you know why you're here on this planet. And most people are just floating along because they're constantly busy or constantly living in fear, not knowing who they are. And that's why I always like look at, when I used to train in jujitsu, you know, I trained under an academy that was run by um, Hoist Gracie, the guy that was in the UFC. And, um, you know, his whole family is just incredible in terms of like the reverence they have for their elders, you know, the respect they have for them. And all of them know that they're part of a lineage. Like they know that like there's this lore about the Gracie family and now you're Gracie and that comes with a lot of responsibility. And so they respect their elders and they respect the craft that they do. And there's this genuine understanding of who they are and what their mission is here. And I feel like we're just lost. Most people are just lost, not knowing where they are, what they're doing, and they're not rooted and grounded in who they are. And if you are in touch with your intuition and who you are and what your mission is, then it doesn't matter what 
what some guy on the news tells you that you should do, or it doesn't matter what other health influencer says you should take this or that. Um, you know what you need and nothing can shake you from that. And for me, that's been a really big part of my evolution is understanding why I'm here, who I am, what I'm doing, where I'm going. And I'm sure for you as well with Crucial Four, it's just really important to have that mission, right? Oh, it's every, yeah. It's like you said, it's everything. I mean, if, if you're not here, you know, and the thing is, is like when I started getting into, you mentioned Jim Rohn, I got, I really like Les <laughs> Brown. I really like Brian Tracy, Stephen Covey, yep. you know, I, I love them all. And, um, and yeah, you know, it's like my big download I got before it all happened, you know, as far as I saw that speck of uh, curling photography of cacao and everything clicked and went over from there was service service and then the word deserve death deserve to serve you know and do you deserve what do you deserve in life well how, how are you serving are you serving people and humanity and and some people are more profound at it than others does it matter you know there's there's other health companies out there that are way bigger than mine that have helped way more people than mine and mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, like, that's not what it's about. It's not about all this left brain whirlwind jargon that can sometimes get right. you know, placed in the field. It, it's, it's really just about, you know, serve, like, how can I serve people in the most way? And it doesn't have to be for health. It doesn't have to be, you know, like that's what people I feel like they, they think they need, need to understand, you know, it's like the only people that really talk about this are usually people that are in the kind of in the field, right? Either in the health field, yeah. either in self-development field, but in reality, it could definitely be a graphic designer. It could be someone that serve that brings massive value to people. It, it's like the Japanese way of doing things, right? Like very mm -hmm. in tune with the craft, very in tune with the service, even if it's making toothpicks, you know, learning mm -hmm. to, like, that's your thing and learning that that's your thing. And, and then exploring too, exploration is key. But yeah, you have to figure out what you love to do. And that's mm -hmm. where that starts. And it might not be, there might be a few things you love to do, you know, and you might be able to choose one of those two things, you know, because mm -hmm. like, yeah, I love learning about foods and herbs, but running a business is not, has nothing to do with reading a book. I know, right? <laughs> it's a totally different deal, you know what I mean? And that's why you see some yeah. that are that are into what I was into and they tried it and it didn't work out for them, you know, because it's like, yeah, well, there's a whole nother sector to the reality to make that happen. Right. What's going to push you past all those BS tasks you have to do or the whatever stuff that maybe isn't your favorite thing or maybe that you're not good at. And that is that mm -hmm. mission of like, why am I here? Why am I, why am I doing that? Like, why am I going in here and trying to build this website right now? I don't know crap about websites. So, well, the people need to have these foods. We got to get this stuff. You know? So being yeah. driven by that core mission, you know what I mean? Like, um, and that, that's like, for me, it's, you know, it's, it's always kind of been about farming, but I didn't have a pot mm -hmm. in. Like, I don't have investors yeah. for Crucial Four. Never have, never will. It's been yeah. operated. We own it 100%. We have no debt at all in the company. Nice. And I don't know anyone in my space that can say that that has a nutrition company. Like I don't know anyone yeah. who started it with pretty, you know. So I guess what I'm getting at here is that it was a slow and, and tedious process for me because I have been doing Crucial Four for over 12, 13 years now. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't. It but it doesn't have to be maybe what I thought it should have been, right? I mean, it doesn't. Like I remember in the beginning, I thought I needed the investor. I thought I needed that money. Cause that's what all my friends did. You know, that all, they all had right. companies, uh, chocolate companies, all these guys in Cali that I knew were starting up, you know, companies similar to mine, maybe a chocolate company or a tea company or whatever. And you know, yeah. California was different than where I was because in California, there's tons of mom and pop cottage natural stores everywhere. And that's how a lot of these mm -hmm. guys grew up. They got where I'm beginning. I had Whole Foods. I think they're going to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or not go at all. Or, like, or nothing. Yeah, nothing. I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't afford to do that. And I'm investors, you know, to do all that because it takes so much money to go retail. So, but anyways, it yeah, a little bit. You know, things kind of shift and change <clears throat> and merge. But for me, like the underlying mission has always been the farming. It's always been getting the food dialed in and in, in the soil. You know, my grandpa was a farmer. I went to school for biochemistry and agronomy. Didn't finish, but that was like the things I was interested in. <laughs> you know, was That's awesome and stuff like that. So. You know, it's 
for me, you know, like, it's like, I've always wanted to farm and wanted to do this, but it's like, it hasn't really been until the last three years that I've been able, actually able to do it. So, you know, just, wow. to, just to let people know, you know, like I've always wanted to farm, but I'm just now able to do it because I had to find something else I liked that worked. Right. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. like finding your mission, finding your thing. It might not be that one thing that could be your, like, again, mine was farming and I'm, I'm just now starting to do that. And that makes me zero money. Like the farm that we do now costs money. It makes zero money. The amount of money that yeah. it takes to, to have someone out there for me to manage them, you know, at paying the rate that people need to live by in, in today's standard, like for the amount that mm -hmm. I get certain herbs from third world countries from like, it's, <laughs> It costs way more money, especially the way I'm doing it, where I'm trying to like, we're testing the vegetables with the, the bio-nutrient bio -nutrient food meter and working with Dan and his crew and, and then dumping like, oh, we need lava rocks. We need paramagnetism. Okay, well, let's go buy a bunch of lava rock, you know, and spend that revenue on, you know, it, it's, it's, it's experimenting. The, the stuff in the backyard is, you know, that we're at now is just like experimentation. It's learning. So when we go to the big one, you know, we kind of have a better idea. Um, but totally. and, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, it, <clears throat> it's like been a philanthropy, the farming for me is like, and as I do all this, I'm like, dude, this has to just be a philanthropy because it's like the way yeah. they made the farmers used to be the richest people in the world, right? Like they were the ones who grew the food. Like they were, they were the richest, yeah. but now it's like, they're the poorest. They're the yeah, poorest. I and know. Like, they're so poor that the government has to subsidize their freaking crops. To allow them to still wow. grow food, you know, and I don't know if people understand what that means. Look it up, and you'll be surprised. And again, that's on that bad industrial model, and there's another model out there that right. exists. But we also <clears> have to reinvigorate and reestablish. You know, we have to restore. We have to all this re we have to do to get things to where they need to be. You know, and, and again, that's why I think electroculture maybe might be that for us. You know, because like. Like I'm three years in back here and, you know, I'm doing everything I know to do in the world. And yeah, I still get blood pressure. Yeah. Yeah. I still get yeah. you know, here and there, you know? And, and, and so it's like, I'm not getting fungus and bacteria stuff, you know, which is good, which means the web style it, but I'm still getting hit with things, you know? And so mm -hmm. it, it can be very discouraging at times too, when you, when you do that, but you just have to remember to like stay focused, keep going, you know, cause it's it, you're, when you're mission driven, you're driven. And, and like you yeah. said, it kind of can break that away from you. You might have slumps and stuff, but. And yeah. I think too, that like when you are mission driven as well, it doesn't really matter like what obstacles you face. Kind of like going back to the, uh, the character in Alice shrugged, you know, when you have something where you know, it's part of your mission, then it doesn't matter like what obstacles come in your way, because you know that it doesn't matter because who you are is this mission. And so you're, you're going to overcome whatever is thrown in your way. So like, you know, for me, there was never a time when I thought about giving up extreme health radio. You know, there are times when I remember, I think in 20, we started in 2012 and I think in 2014 or 2015, <clears throat> they um, had that big Google like wipeout thing. That was the beginning of the censorship. Um, and you know, we were wiped out. Like we lost so many listeners and so many viewers to our website and so much traffic and all this stuff, uh, because of this update that Google did. And basically it just prevented it. You know, it was like the equivalent of just losing a ton of revenue because these were all listeners and people that were finding us, you know, mm -hmm. and now that was like cut and cut all the way down to like 30% of what it was. It was like a 70% cut. And, um, but it wasn't like, okay, well, now I guess I, I guess Google really, you know, it's hard enough to run a business and, you know, I got competition I got to, you know, compete against and, that, and now I have to fight against big tech and, oh, well, I guess we're over. It's like, no, okay, well, what's the next social media thing I can join? How can I do this? And, you know, the word needs to get out there and, you know, it doesn't matter what comes in front of you, like you're, you're going to overcome it. And it's not even an, an option. Because, and, and that's how you know if you're mission driven. Because it doesn't matter what comes against you. Like, you will overcome whatever is thrown in your face, you know? Yeah. Yeah, be stubborn as a bull. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just not an option to fail. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. yeah. There is options not there, right? It's just like a diversion. Yeah, yeah. Because this is like, you know, your whole thing. And this is what you do. I and mean, this is who I am. This is what I do. And so if you're going to shut me down here, then I'll go there. If you're going to shut me down there, I'll go somewhere else. And, and uh, it doesn't matter. And when you realize that. 
too, though, you know, it's like sometimes that <laughs> diversions, which lead us somewhere else, is where we actually probably needed to go some, sometimes, you know, like, sometimes these things uh-huh. happen to us that are, like, de- devastating in the beginning, you know, and then something else happens, and that opened up this whole other reality, and had that not happened, you wouldn't have been to the new reality, and the new reality is just dumping blessings on you like crazy, right? So, yeah, there is something to be said about about that too and that you know i guess what what's the saying things don't happen to you they happen for you right you ever heard that one yeah yeah Yeah. so it's just like learning to have that christ consciousness with even that adversity and understand that you know there is an underlying plan you know having that faith Uh you know and all that you know because i've been real bad about that (laughs) i've been real bad about that yeah yeah Emotionally on myself, you know, totally. especially when we first started the farm, you know, you probably hear it a little bit in my voice the first yeah. time. Yeah. And, and it was, it's so challenging, but it's it, in, in retrospect, I'm like, holy sheesh, like this has really allowed me to understand what I need to do next time, you know, and that's made me so excited. Yeah. Next time, the next big project, <clears throat> you know what I mean? And I, I wouldn't yeah. be excited about the next big project, but this one was going super, like, like you know, if it hadn't gone the way it went, you know? And and so... And then yeah, no, I... Things, so... <laughs> I think it's just interesting that people that are interested in personal growth and development and stuff like that, um, you know, tend to be entrepreneurs or tend to do things that like for us, you know, I, I've, you know, going back to the gardening piece, you know, that's something that I've been wanting to do since 2003 or four, when I first got into the raw food scene is start gardening and growing some trees and stuff like that. And then, you know, being perfect kind of uh, prevented me from doing that. And, but recently, you know, like we've had so many challenges, as you know, uh, you know, with our raised beds, you know, critters come in, they eat, and then you got fungus and mold. But the way I look at it is like, okay, we're, we're, we're just going to fail. I, I'm okay with that. Like, you know, this, you know, it's easy to be like, everyone else can start a garden. How come we can't, you know, and everything, you know, there's trees down the street that are the same trees we're planted and those trees are thriving and ours are not. Well, it doesn't matter if that tree's fr- thriving or not. What matters is like, you know, for me to, to create a situation where I can overcome an obstacle so that I can learn and grow um, that's what it's all about. So whether or not the tree grows or not is just a manifestation of me overcoming the obstacle. The obstacle is who I become in the process of trying to learn how to get that tree to grow and how to protect your garden and the food that you grow and who I become in that process. So that's really what, what it's all about. It's not, it's not if the tree grows or not, or if a rodent, you know, last spring we had our first, uh, peach tree and dude, all of our, all of our fruit got taken by by something right and so it was like the first success we had in our garden and then all of a sudden that got taken away from i don't know what was up in our trees eating our fruit but you know it's easy to get frustrated at things and i think it's just important to like realize like you're gonna fail and it's not about getting the fruit it's about learning how to overcome obstacles and for me that's what it's been all about you know yeah the saying comes to my mind when you say that it's not about the death it's not about the destination, it's the journey, right? It's not about yeah. the end point, it's the process that got you there. That's where all the gems are, that's where all the the, the love is and learning mm-hmm. and all, all the things that uh, yeah make you, make you laugh. It's like the cosmic giggle, right? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. yeah, and I think that too, the same with studying nutrition and health and uh, healing and minerals and all this kind of stuff. You know, for me, it's like the same thing. I want to be proven wrong about things and I have no problem admitting I'm wrong about something. And I think that's really where the self-discovery comes and the growth comes is is learning and not identifying with what you learn and what and if what you learn happens to be like so much a part of you that if it is proven wrong later on in life or later on in your research, then somehow you have to like step away from everything. You know, it's like no, it's okay. I was wrong, you know, and, you know, and here's what I was reading that made me think that way. And it's okay to be wrong. And, you know, and just constantly learning because, you know, if someone who has the same message for like 20 years in the health field, to me, I, I, either they're not researching or they're not growing or, uh, or they don't want to because (laughs) it affects their bottom line. Right. So I think it's really, (laughs) 
<laughs> Wait, what's that? Then you still think David Wolf's raw vegan? Oh man, I highly doubt it. That. You don't have to answer that. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we're both on the same page with yeah, I, I totally agree with you. You know, like the, and, the and that way it's fun to research, right? Well, it, not yeah, it's fun. That exploration, learning something new, it like gives you this spark. You know, for me it gives me a spark, you know, and that spark's kinda like what makes me excited in the morning or you know, maybe at night, you know, to read a new book, you know, and yeah, you know, and <clears throat> and things like that, you know. It's it's so funny. I because I've been buying like every electroculture book that I can find, you know, and the patents and they're super boring to read. And sometimes when I'm using the restroom, I'll, I'll have a book there and I'll read it. And my wife like makes fun of me because so I get off the rest the pot, you know, and it's TMI, but it's like, I got the swipe pot or whatever, but I'm like, mom, my legs kind of going numb. She's like, yeah, can you just sit there <laughs> reading? Like you're not even used to, you're done using the restroom. You're just sitting there reading. I'm like, yeah, I'm so interested. I don't even want to get off the pot. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. Drive yeah. though, right? Yeah. So, well, man, yeah, I know it's so much fun. It, it's so much fun because there's always something new to learn, you know, whether it's agriculture, whether it's big C little V, whether it's like nutrition, you know, there's so many aspects of health and healing, detoxification, minerals, like there's so much and, and how it actually impacts those around you where you can actually help people. You know, I think that's where like you starting this podcast and creating your crucial for company and how you can actually get your ideas and products out to people. You know, that's really ultimately uh, the karma of what you create and how it affects other people's lives uh, that you don't even know. Like you, you know, someone may be listening to this five years from now that, you know, somehow gets affected by it. And, you know, that's some karma points for us, you know, <laughs> it's like whatever the case may be, you know? Yeah. I'll shave, brother. It's, it's, uh, it's cool. It's cool to know that we can sit here and have a, a wonderful conversation, have a good time, be in the comfort of our home, be around our family and still be paying full. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and to mm -hmm. me, that's what, I mean, life's so divine in that, right? Like the magic is here. The divinity is here. We're surrounded around the angels. They're all, everything's perfect as it is. You just have to wake up to it, you know, and, and yeah, but it, 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 it takes time, you know, to kind of get to that perspective. I know a lot of people don't think like that. And I, I didn't always think like that, you know, so it, it yeah. takes a lot of hard work and dedication and time to get here. You know, because I, I remember like when things really like in the beginning, I did everything like I, I sourced everything. I made everything. I had a small little shop with a guy doing ozone, you know, 15 years ago. I checked people out. I'd be in the back, like capsulating stuff. People would be knocking on the front of the desk. Like, hey, it's all back there. You know, and I'd be like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, like, hire people to help. And then it's like and then I realized real quick I was not good at that. Like I was not good. Yeah part of the business so i had to find someone that was and i was got blessed because it was my wife and my wife is like a cutthroat like wow our a friend and i've never seen anything like it like i had friends i hired i'd leave them around for wow. four, three years she's like you gotta get rid of him i'm like i just can't do it and he's like, you know, like, <laughs> and i'm just like, I'm like I'm that's stay awesome stay at home and do my thing because like, i don't want to get fired from me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> Oh, man. But, uh, but yeah, so that's you know, awesome. John gives us those people. He brings in those people into our lives, you know, six degrees of separation and these ideas mm -hmm. right? and that, uh, you know, we've known certain people. I feel like the people that we choose to be with in life, that our partners, I feel like we've known these people before. There's, there's a reason why that like my wife's louse, bro. Like she, her parents were, if, She's like Laos Thai Indian, actually. My mom, my my wife's kind of a mix. Oh wow! But her parents came here. You know, she's first born, and then they lived in Fresno, Cali, right? And then moved to wow, yeah, hardcore, right? Like Fresno, bro. Like, and then and then <laughs> Bakersfield. I think she was there too, like hardcore places. And then and then in Arkansas. Wow. Right. And then I moved to Arkansas. Yeah. And then I moved back and I meet her at a gym. She's working out at here in Dallas, like actually in Irving kind of wow. area. Wow. There's another area. I don't know. So it's just like, what the heck? You know what I mean? Like, um, I guess like when you follow your heart and you just go, like, I don't know. So John takes, takes, takes over and like, you just, things work out, you know, just trust, trust in that mm -hmm. process, trust in yourself, use your gut, steal your mind, 
You know, I think stealing our mind is probably one of the most <laughs> underrated things you can do because it's simple, it's free, and it's extremely easy to actually do. I'm not saying to transcend through meditation. That's not easy, but and that's speculative and <laughs> and what that mm-hmm. means. Right? Yeah. But to just say, after I get off this podcast, I'm turning everything off. I'm going to go sit in a chair outside and just sit there and breathe. Like that is literally the most easiest thing I could physiologically do with my day. You know what I mean? And it's so right. Right. Underrated. It's so underrated, you know, because I, I, yeah, I like, that's so cool. That was big for me. You know what I mean? But hey, man, I want to thank you. Well, too. No. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bro. What were you going to say? No, I just think that, I mean, what you're talking about is so counterintuitive, you know, most people are just constantly listening to something, constantly listening to someone else, always in fear. And, you know, it's such like a revolutionary act to grow your own food, to sit by yourself and contemplate something, you know, that's how we gain our power and that's how we become like superheroes, you know? And so, you know, shutting out the voices of those that are trying to get us to live in fear, shutting out the voices of those who are trying to take us down, shutting out the constant voices of people saying different things and trying to get you to, you know, suck you into their vortex and to their way of thinking, you know, shutting all that out and saying, who am I? you know, contemplating what you're here for. I mean, that's such a revolutionary act. And if we all did that, if everyone did that, there would be no big C, little V going on right now because no one would buy it, right. you know? So yeah. my take. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I think once we're properly educated and we have good discernment and, you know, you know, you know it, is, it is a trip to me because it's like, when I go out and I see the people I see, and maybe it's because I'm in Texas, but like, I just like, don't see it. But then when it all started happening, wow. I'm in jujitsu and my, my uh-huh. professor who's John Machado, who is, uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. He's related to the Gracie's that's his cousins. So they all grew up Yeah, yeah. and John Jacques, his brother and, and Reagan and mm-hmm. Carlos is down the road, John is right here. He has got promoted to master too. So he, Oh, wow. He, um, during that whole deal. And I mean, he's into Oregon, he's into everything. And I'm like, you're right here. Wow. Alan. Like what? The That's heck? awesome. You know? And then, so I had my son going at first for like a few years. And like, to this day, when professor introduced me, he's like, this guy came up here for two years. Didn't even roll. Had his son coming. <laughs> <He's> like, <"Dog." laughs> But wow. To, to my point, though, to what I'm getting at, because you keep saying the, the big C, little V is like his stance on that, you know, and seeing where he was and then talking to those people around me, like everyone was was like, you know, very anti. But but then mm-hmm. when it all kind of started coming out, it was like, well, I thought you were anti. And I'm like, why is that guy going in there washing his hands with that bullshit alcohol stuff every five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think for me, though, I guess to, to you know, I'm kind of going everywhere with this because I'm just kind of rolling and flowing with it in my mind's eye. But I think really, kind of for me, when I really sit back and think about like why people did that so easily to themselves, mm-hmm. is, is their lack for me. For me, this is my perspective. Perspective. I don't know anything. I don't know shit. Mm-hmm. But for me. It was their lack of connection to source to God. To me, right. that's what it was. It was lack of faith, like lack of faith in themselves and mm-hmm. in their connection. And then and, and that might go wrong against what some people believe. That, but to me, it was like I just felt like God so loved, loves me and that the connection to source, I feel for me and my family is for me, it's just it's so there, so present. Why would I ever do something, some dude tells me to do i mean and not just that like look at the research i mean look at everything rogan did for exposing like all of, and he was just having general conversations and he was pretty much on the fence the whole time and now right. look where he's at you know what i mean and then think i think about all the people too that have already went that route and then they look back now mm-hmm. they would admit that they took the damn thing because they know now they're like oh shit we messed up and it's like, right, well, right, right. I would say more of that than anything nowadays. Like if we were to talk mm-hmm. about what's going on now, what's happening now in the collective, I think most people realize they shouldn't have done it and they did it and they're like, shit. So 
So I guess the next thing they're gonna yeah, do is uh, right? So they're gonna do the <laughs> alien invasion, fake alien invasion. That's the left. Oh right, 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 right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Cool. Yeah, all we can. No, no worries. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it so much, yeah, dude. Really I'm stoked cool. you're going to start a podcast. <laughs> yeah, man. Thank you. Yeah, you definitely helped inspire that. And, you know, really, we had a bunch of lives that we did on IG. And IG's a you-know-what. So mm -hmm. ugh, I was like, we got to get all this content and send over somewhere else, you know. And I actually started doing mm -hmm. podcast years ago. I we found Nicole was like finding archive podcasts and stuff in the Dropbox and I'm like, oh man, like these are like ancient. Like no way. It just never got <laughs> you know, again having kids, running a business, getting busy, everything that you know goes on. But I wanted to ask you That's awesome. Uh three I have three questions for you. What's your favorite <laughs> first one, what's your favorite crucial four product? Oh dude well, hands down, it's got to be the magnesium bicarbonate. I knew it. Well, I knew you were going to say that. That's the one yeah. you post the most. So yeah, cool. yeah, that one is um, to to get people a little further understanding. Magnesium is is such an important mineral, and it's the mineral that we're we're all lost, you know, due to stress, due to life circumstances. Uh, it's it's required for so many processes in the body. You know, like I'm always looking for ways to get magnesium in. And, you know, people want to start with their hormones or they want to start with their thyroid, not realizing that, that without magnesium, you can't convert T4 to T3 in your liver and have active hormone T3. You can't detoxify heavy metal. You can't create um, um, ATP in complex four of your mitochondria. You cannot uh, synthesize the conversion of, of, of vitamin D3 from 7-dehydrocholesterol all the way to VDR, which transcribes 913 genes. All of those things are magnesium dependent, plus 3,700 more things. And so when I learned how to make magnesium bicarbonate, which in my understanding, it seems to be the most absorbable because I like that it's in water, um, using a soda stream and your magnesium bicarbonate powder, dude, life life changing life changing product man that's awesome yeah, same, i love it same for my, <laughs> when i first gave it to my son his he was sitting in the back porch and he was like dad my head's like buzzing like i feel like cuz i just feel like i'm lit up right now and i in my and I'm thinking, <laughs> how deficient have we been i have we had many right. we did sprays we'd spray them down with <laughs> bass here and there we would take some calcium mm -hmm. and magnesium here and there, but it wasn't until we started making the bicarbonate salts with the soda stream that we got the hit, like the big hit right. with magnesium where it was like life altering in your, like how you feel. Like I remember just feeling so calm from it, but yeah, that's, it's definitely a game changer. And, and to also add to what you say, a lot of people, when, especially when they come to my side, they're like looking at these herbs and I'm like, how's your water? How's your minerals? Like that, that's number one. Yeah. Yeah. That's number one and two, man. Right? It's like, then we can talk about some herbs, you know, because I, I did it the right. wrong way too. I went for the herbs first too. I thought <laughs> the herbs and all the superfoods were going to fix everything. And, and in their, in, in their defense, they have minerals and nutrition in them that most of our food doesn't. And I think that's really what helped pulls us through that. But there's certain basic minerals that we need to be addressed in our diet that we do need to supplement. And that, that is something that Matt Blackburn has really kind of shown me, you know, because I was very anti all of that. You know, I was like, oh, no, I got mm. cacao, number one food source, magnesium, iron, chromium. I got, I got you know, greens and blah, blah, blah. And it's, dude, not, not enough. It's not, a, it's not a, right. you know, you, we need this there. But then also learning about how your pancreas has a bi that's where the bicarbonate buffering system is located and that there is a mm -hmm. bicarbonate buffering system learning about the bicarbonate buffering system and the fact that that exists within my physiology that actually woke me up to a whole new reality and then learning that okay we have this system uh magnesium bicarbonate is part of that system <clears throat> how would i get that mm -hmm. in oh it would have been in my water oh huh. right that's where it yeah. went off because then I'm like, okay, so if I'm supposed to be getting this form of magnesium in this thing that I do consume more than anything, water, and I'm not, then naturally I need to make sure that I'm doing that, right? Like, 
because that's exactly a process, you know, and that's what was discovered when they, the guy, was it Russell Bennett that discovered it or whatever in Australia? He was like the uh -huh. drinking the water that had the magnesium and they were getting it every single sip of water they drank had magnesium in it in a therapeutic amount and it was in the form of bicarbonate salt. Holy shibo. And it started, you know, like right. well, click off, right? So yeah, that, that one is oh, so important. So important. All right, next question. Uh, what are some things you do every day to feel limitless? Oh gosh, um, let me think. Well, I would say putting a priority for me <laughs> on sleep because uh, for me, I'm by night by nature a night owl, you know, uh, because you know I, I'm just that way by nature. But also, you know, having kids and having a homestead and having, you know, trying to help my wife and you know all the self care stuff I do every day, you know, I don't really get a chance to have like an eight hour block of work time. So I end up working late into the night because it's quiet. I can get more, more stuff done, but really focusing on improving my sleep. That's been a lifelong, not, I wouldn't say battle, but the but that's been a big thing for me. So I'm always constantly working on how do I get to bed earlier? How, you know, how do I optimize my sleep? What can I do during the day and leading up to sleep and optimizing that as much as possible? Because you know, as much as magnesium, like a lot of people want to focus on, you know, different herbs and different things, but you know, nothing moves the needle like 42% of your, of your enzymes like magnesium, right? But magnesium, in my opinion, pales in comparison to getting a good sleep. Like nothing feels better than getting a good, decent sleep where you feel amazing when you wake up. So that's been a big one for me. I'd say the other thing is, is optimizing my water. I'm always like adding, you know, methylene blue and uh, magnesium bicarbonate. I'm adding, you know, uh, molecular, excuse me, um, molecular hydrogen. Yeah. I'm putting it in light. You know, I'm doing all kinds of different things to optimize my water. Um, and then the other thing too is regulating my light environment like that that's huge like making sure that i'm not living under blue light and uh you know that that to me is has been a game changer in terms of like how well i sleep you know our home and the calmness with which our kids sleep and all that stuff the light has been like way way more important and impactful on, on my on my life than you know any mineral or nutrient uh, and then I would say the next thing would be gardening, like, you know, getting out there in the garden, getting my hands in the soil, taking my shoes off, taking off my sunglasses, exposing my skin to the full spectrum sunlight and just getting in tune with nature and uh, building up the garden, I think to me has been huge. But I, I would probably add to this list a fifth one. And that is what we talked about earlier, taking responsibility for your health. You know, I think that's been, you know, and, and, and your life too. every aspect of your life is is under our control. So I would add that fifth one of the responsibility to the gardening, <laughs> to the gardening one as well. <laughs> last question is, what's in the future, man? What do you get? What are you guys working on? What's next for you guys? Well, we've kind of changed the format of the show because um, I think we have like 700 and I don't know how many, 50 shows or something like that going back 10 years. And it's I really do love interviewing people, but we're going to take a little break from that. And what I'm working on right now is um, building up our I, I was calling them protocols, but. I'll get asked a lot about like, what do I do for diabetes? What do I do for high blood pressure? Come on, you know, my cholesterol is X, Y, Z. What do I do for this? And I would always spend all this time like putting together what I would do for each one of those situations and trying to include as many different aspects of health that people don't think about, like all the stuff that we're into, you know, like frequencies and even like family constellation therapy and deeper aspects of things. Um, and finding solutions from homeopathy to traditional Chinese medicine, to herbs, to uh, superfoods, to minerals and everything. And so I've been building these protocols, you know, giving people like options, like the latest one I was working on was diabetes. Um, and when you start getting into the research in diabetes and diabetes and understanding how and why, uh, you know, the pancreas isn't creating those beta cells to create insulin properly and why our cells don't accept the insulin uh, to get inside the cell, which prevents glucose from getting inside the cell and understanding how and why that happens. Like you realize there's so many options that people aren't being told about, but they're told to get on metformin or they're told to get on some drug that's, you know, causing all kinds of uh, health issues. And so I'm putting together, 
you know, together what I was calling protocols, but basically like two to three page, uh, guides of what I would do, you know, um, for those situations and we're making them available on our Patreon site. And so I've been having a lot of fun researching cause I love doing it, but I never had the time unless I sort of base my shows off these protocols, which I'm starting to do now for a while. So we'll see how it goes. And, you know, I want to offer solutions for people, you know, sometimes people are like, you know, you can talk forever about the causes, what tests to take, what the doctors will take you, the dangers of medications, and you can go on and on forever. But sometimes people are like, dude, my, uh, you know, my blood sugar is sky high. What do I do? You know? And so that's why I, I'm creating these types of things to help people and I'm trying to do it in a way where I don't get put in prison. You know, I'm not claiming they, they, they do anything like in my documents, I have to say like, talk to a doctor because none of what I say below impacts health in any way. Like it doesn't. And so I, I, it's crazy that we have to say stuff like that, you know, but we have to. So, but I've been having a lot of fun developing those. I think I've got like 12 of them so far. And so we're doing like three or four a month now. So it's, it's fun to come up with solutions for people, you know? That's super cool. Yeah. Then you'll have like a database there and then people can go there and it'll be so much easier and less stressful yeah. for you too. Cause I, I know what that's like when I first started it was more of like a wellness center. People would come in and dump all their stuff on me. And I was like a therapist it was everything, <sighs> right? The nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, Oh my God. And it's a lot, you know, but you have all this information. People want it. And so many times we yeah. get caught in that moment and just give it to them, but we don't take the time to say, hold on, let me, actually take this information and let me digitize it and make it and clean it up and, and, and then put it somewhere where someone can access it later. I think that that's genius. And I think that's going to do a lot for you guys. So, yeah, thank you. So. Yeah. And I, and I just want to just help people and give people options. Cause ultimately when you start reading some of this stuff that I'm putting together, you realize like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, in my diabetes one, I think I had like 186 links to different studies and different uh, resources and why they work and stuff. And it's like, you know, someone could take those links and show their doctor if they want. I don't really recommend that because doctors are clueless to all this stuff and they won't look at it. But, um, I, you know, it's like all this information, you know, is available if you just research it and look, look for it. Um, but the doctors just want to put people on drugs and that it just, it makes me sad. So ultimately people will look at something like this and be like, dude, how come I wasn't told this? Or how come no one talks about this? And there are ways to heal from whatever condition you're currently experiencing. There's ways to heal and you definitely can heal. And so that's the purpose of just let people know there's options to heal, you know, outside of the, you know, sharp, you know, thing people want in their arm or whatever else, you know, there's ways to heal. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks again. Yeah, man. Um, and if you could stay on, I'm going to hit stop on the record here, but thank you again. Uh, I appreciate For sure. your time. I know our time is, is really the most valuable thing we can give each other. And uh, you gave me an hour and a half of yours. Hour and having seven minutes and 27 seconds. Dude, it's all good, man. <laughs> God bless you. Thanks, man. You too. Okay.